Dr. Chickley, could you please explain a little bit about the technique that we call FAR? Yes. Okay. Fluid Articular Release. So it's a way to find, many people want to work on joint articulation and then they are not allowed to use a high velocity cracking or any technique like this against a barrier and we don't often don't need. When you get trained with this technique, you realize that they are not the one that stay the longest in place. They are not the one that are the most efficient, and you can have some risk with them, uh, especially if you work with the neck, for example. Um, so there's many other techniques developed to avoid this kind of problem that you can apply to baby of any age, to older person with osteoporosis, to animals, of any size, uh, almost, to uh, you know the situation when you don't want to maybe uh, use um, high velocity, uh, maybe a, a, a kid that just have trauma, a sport trauma on the field of concussion in the street. Do they have a hidden fracture, a fracture of the dance that is hidden or, uh, or hidden bleeding? So you need to have those techniques sometimes, even if you have any other type of technique. So. This is something very gentle, very non-invasive. You have a diagnostic of every joint with ease and a treatment that uh, combines three components. And one of them is a very gentle fluid rhythm in the joint that will help reestablish the uh, alignment of the joint uh, together and um, release the joint. And it's a very fluidic, so very gentle, very global. And the other thing is sometimes the joint itself is not the problem. Sometimes the joint is strong enough, the capsule hold, the ligament hold. Sometimes it is an embryological joint, could be the metaphysis on each side of a real joint, for example. You have a diaphysis, the shaft of the bone, and the epiphysis in between the growth plate. There you have a joint that is embryological, that is fused, but sometimes it can rotate. For example, in Osgood Slatter, there's no much problem with that disease, except in that disease, if they don't have much pain or, or something like this, they may find, we may find 15, 20 years later that the plateau of the tibia has rotated or sheared from the shaft, and that where it is a problem rather than the joint itself. So the, the knee joint itself will be strong, but just at the plateau of the tibia, in the interface with the shaft, the diaphysis, or epiphysis, um, diaphysis, that's where the problem is. And that's why they often have meniscus problem much later. And the meniscus come from the fact that there's a, a change in the uh, connection between the two articular surfaces. And if you bring them back together, the joint is much stronger, the alignment is happening, and you don't uh, compress uh, the meniscus in the wrong way and create a dysfunction. So you want to work on all these joints, on finger, arms, legs, you have face, you have, for example, the metopic suture that fused, you know, midline, you have the symphysis menti of the two jaw. If the two jaw are not exactly fused together, but a bit like this, it can create a TMJ problem. So all that are the embryological, articulation that we can address with those techniques and you cannot address with a cracking technique. And finally, we're gonna work also intra-osseous to make sure that the joint is not affected because there's a big rotation inside the bone that also uh, not, does not help the two articular surfaces to be right where they should be in front of each other. So between the inter-osseous and intra-osseous of the whole body, we need two classes of three days, the upper extremity, lower extremity, the skull, inside the mouth, so it covers, but it's very fun to work, to feel the bone, to feel inside the bone, uh, and it's a very efficient technique. If you know how to do this, release a little bit of fascia, fluid, the viscera, including the super viscera of the brain, you cover a lot of ground for your practice. Wonderful, thank you.